content. My game needs a lot of content. We're talking hundreds of unique levels of content. The problem is, I can only make so many levels without making the game feel repetitive and stale. So, how do I fix that? You probably have seen a day-night cycle before, and you know what it is supposed to look like. But I wanted to make my day-night cycle special, and the way to do it is to make something I haven't seen anybody do before, which is to make it react to the weather itself. In most games, day-night cycles work by having a gradient, and changing the global light to the color of the gradient over time. I made my day-night cycle have multiple gradients, one for each of the weather types, and blend between them appropriately to the weather changes like Rain is a very simple, yet very effective way to make a huge impact on the game's feel. Most pixel art games make rain by tiling a simple texture over the entire screen. There are some pros to it, as it is more efficient, but the deal breaker for me is that you can't really modify it at runtime. In the other hand, I want to be able to vary the intensity and the amount of the rain between different levels. And the easiest way to accomplish that is to use a particle system with a little splash animation when the particle hits the ground. I also made an option to turn it into a storm by adding a lightning that just makes the screen flash white at random times. The rain and the lightning are controlled by the main weather manager script so I can make small changes to the effects between different levels or turn them off altogether. Starting off, I wanted wind to just be a simple shader for the forest surrounding the playable area so it's not as static. But, as it usually happens in game dev, it ended up being a way bigger feature than I anticipated, becoming an entirely new system on its own. I can set the general strength of the wind I want for the level, but then the wind takes on its own life, slowly changing speed and direction in small intervals just like in real life. Now, depending on the object, I might want it to react differently to the wind. The way I do that is I have a base wind listener class that handles the wind changes, then classes derived from it that define how a given object is going to act according to those changes. Like for example, particle wind listener for the rain or smoke. And if I want an object to react to the wind, I can just add a wind listener component to it. Some of those objects being the rain, campfire smoke, decorations and... There are two parts to the snow system. First one is snow itself, which is just a particle system that I made similar to the way rain was made. Second one is more interesting, as it's a shader that will take any sprite and turn it into a snowy version of itself as it starts snowing. In its basic form, it will just change the colors of the sprite, but the shader also takes normal maps into account, which if you don't know, normal maps specify which way a given pixel is facing, so we can tell what's top, bottom, left or right. Thanks to that, the shader will only put the snow in the correct spots depending on where the snow is coming from, tying nicely into the wind system. The snow was also the basis for making. Alright, so seasons are not really a part of the weather system, as they are more of a visual change than an actual system, but there are still a couple cool tricks that I use to add more content to the game and save myself some time. For example, instead of redrawing some sprites, I just use a shader to recolor them, while others are just a basic sprite changes. My favorite part is how every different season has a different foreground. Anyway, all these microsystems together make a very simple weather system, but it allows me to create hundreds of unique feeling levels with minimal effort. If you like this video, then check out my previous videos about the custom animator I made, and consider becoming a patron to support the development of Deer Hunt. Also, don't forget to join the Peach Tree Pixel Discord, links in the description.